Welcome to the Parsha Perspective. Each week, we will delve deep in a weekly Torah portion to find a practical and insightful way to enhance your daily life. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Shalom Yemini. Each week, we will look into the weekly Torah portion to find inspiration that will complement your daily life and intensify your connection to God. This week's Parsha Perspective is dedicated in memory of Rabbi Gabi and Rifki Holtzberg, Hashem Yimkam Damam. They were killed on the 29th of Cheshvan in 2008 while helping the Jewish people in Mumbai, India. May their memory continue to inspire Jews all over the world and may Hashem continue to bless their son Moshe, who is having his Bar Mitzvah this year with much health and happiness. This week's Torah portion is Parshas Toldes. Our Parsha introduces us to the third and final forefather, Yaakov Avinu. Similar to Avram, Yitzchak and Rivka were childless for a very long time. However, after 20 years, Hashem finally accepted their prayers, and Rivka gave birth to twins, Yaakov and Esav. Even from birth, Yaakov and Esav were polar opposites. The firstborn Esav was naturally red and hairy, while Yaakov was small and only managed to leave the womb because he grabbed on to Esav's heel. As the two grew older, the differences became more evident. Esav was a man of the field and an expert hunter, contrasting Yaakov, who was a gentle and modest person. Esav also served idols and married women from the land of Canaan, which displeased Yaakov greatly, while Yaakov spent his time studying Torah and developing his relationship with God. At the age of 123 years old, Yitzchak summoned Esav and told him that he wished to bless him, but first asked him to hunt an animal to prepare a meal so he could eat. Rivka, who overheard this conversation, quickly cooked some meat and told Yaakov to put on Esav's clothing in order to trick Yitzchak into giving him the blessings. Yaakov did as instructed. He put on Esav's garments and took the meal that his mother had made and went into his father's tent. Under the impression that Esav had returned because Yitzchak was blind, he gave the brachas that was meant for Esav to Yaakov, including the most important one, mastery over his brother. As soon as Yitzchak concluded, Yaakov left his father's presence just as Esav was coming back from the field. When Esav entered his father's tent to receive the blessings, Yitzchak realized what just happened. He informed Esav that he could no longer give him blessings as he already gave them to Yaakov. Esav was extremely angry and determined to kill his younger brother. However, Rivka already sent Yaakov to Haran in order to find a wife. However, a question comes to mind. The Pusuk says, Vayehav Yitzchak es Esav kitzayid b'fiv v'rivka oheves es Yaakov. Yitzchak loved Esav because he was a trapper with his mouth. However, Rivka loved Yaakov. We know that Esav served idols. So how could Yitzchak love Esav more than he could love Yaakov? Did he not know what Esav was up to? How could he want to give the blessings to Esav? The most straightforward answer to this question is brought down by Rashi. He writes that since Yitzchak was blind, he indeed had no idea what Esav was up to. As Barashas Rabbah points out, the Pesach says Yitzchak loved Esav because he was Tzayed Bifiv, a trapper with his mouth. The Medrash explains that Esav would trick Yitzchak into thinking that he was religious by asking challenging and complicating questions on Jewish law. This convinced Yitzchak that Esav was righteous and therefore deserving of these blessings. However, the reason that Rivka wasn't deceived was because she grew up around deception her whole life. She grew up in her uncle's house, Lovan Ha'arami, who was a known swindler. On the other hand, Yitzchak, who grew up with Avram and Sarah, only knew honesty and integrity. However, a more profound and compelling explanation is that Yitzchak loved Esav specifically because he knew what Esav was up to. As the Pesach says, Vayar Esav ki ro'is b'nois kenan be'ene Yaakov aviv. That Esav saw that the Canaanian woman were evil in the eyes of his father Yitzchak. Therefore, Esav went and married the daughter of Ishmael. So even though Yitzchak knew exactly what Esav was up to, he did not disavow or abandon him. Rather, he loved him even more passionately. Yitzchak understood that his love would have a more profound impact on Esav than anything else. And we see that he indeed had a deep effect on Esav, because Esav kept a commandment of honoring his parents with much enthusiasm. As it says in Devam Rabbah, the Rabbi Shimon Gamliel said that no man has honored their father as much as I have except for Esav. And as a reward for fulfilling this commandment with so much passion, the Jewish people were commanded by Moshe Rabbeinu not to wage war against the nation of Edom, who are descendants of Esav. 
in our daily life, it is imperative that we understand that many times being loving and kind in situations that are difficult and challenging will have a more significant impact than being tough or strict. This is especially true with children, as many times their behavior is simply innocent and playful fun. However, a harsh reaction can have the opposite effect that we are trying to achieve and can later have serious and severe repercussions. Therefore, it is essential that we measure our response and reactions carefully as not to make a mistake that we will regret forever. There is an amazing quote by the Lubavitcher Rebbe, To be kind is more important than to be right. Many times what people need is not a brilliant mind that speaks, but a special heart that listens. Have a great weekend and good Shabbos. Thank you for tuning in to The Parsha Perspective. Check out our website, theparshaperspective.com. Send thoughts and comments to theparshaperspective at gmail.com. Till next time, thanks for listening.